What's up guys? Mike and Frankie here from Three Mississippi. We have uh, we have some struggles with these gloves. Uh, we have two deer, one in each of these coolers here. And we're gonna be breaking these down today. And we decided we would do a video uh, on breaking down the back legs. Uh, we may do uh, a few other videos while we're doing this, but this video is gonna focus on a back leg we have four back legs here, uh, cause two deer, each deer has two back legs. Like how that works. I have not broken down a white tailed deer in over 12 years. I think Sid was pregnant with Frankie the last time I broke down a white tailed deer. Now I've broken down a lot of hogs, uh, sheep, goats, since then, several a year for the last seven years or so. First time doing a whitetail deer in a long time. And it's gonna be fun. We're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna share with you the process. Hopefully, put a whole bunch of meat on the shelf and in the freezer. Let's do it. my cutco knives here frankie actually got a really nice mossy oak processing kit for christmas so uh, we may try that out too but let's start out with the back leg we're gonna start out with this is my deer and that's ross's deer where's your deer frankie somewhere in a field in a field <laughs> all right so there you go back leg of a deer this is the inside of the back leg got some hairs on it we're gonna get those cleaned off um you know this is the, where the the pelvic b uh bone is that's and where we went slicey slicey this is where we slicey slicey with the sawzall this is the h bone right here probably very similar to a hog we're gonna find out uh, but i'm actually gonna start down here and work my way up to that i'm gonna start by trying to get this shank off right here. And I feel like, uh, I feel like if I follow that little knobby knobby right there to right behind it, there we go. Something happened. Now, I like to follow muscle groups when I'm butchering something. I do wanna get a lot of this silver skin and fat off of this thing. I know a lot of people, they like to tell you that fat is flavor. And man, when you're talking about, when you're talking about uh, beef or pork, that is without a doubt the truth. But um, I don't like deer fat at all. I think it's nasty. Maybe it's not as nasty as, um, as like alligator fat. You eat alligator? Uh, alligator? Yeah. I don't eat alligator fat. When's the last time you ate alligator? Woo! Long time. Since you've been born. Not since you've been born, rather. I'm gonna worry about that fat later, but we are gonna be getting the fat off. So, you see this muscle that's laying over the top of this shank right here? Mm -hmm. I want to follow that muscle just like this and just open it up. Cause I want to peel that right off of the shank, hopefully. Kind of get your finger in that tissue there. Cause this really is not part of the shank. This muscle that's laying down on top of it. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I've kind of opened that up and hollowed out, uh, give myself access to that shank all the way down there. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. This side is harder to see because of all this connective, well, you know, fat really and silver skin. So let's see if I can get some of this off so I can really see where that natural seam is because we don't want that all that in on there anyway. I hope you're taking good notes because we're gonna have you try the next leg, what do you think? 
There's that shank, right? And I'm gonna follow this line right here. Do you see that line? Yeah. I'm, that's what I'm gonna cut. He did. <laughs> okay. I thought you were just gonna like shoot it away. No, a little bit of violence. Always choose violence if you have the option. Oh wait, did I just think that out loud? <laughs> Same thing, see how I've just kind of hollowed out and you don't see any meat because I literally went right into the seam between the connective tissues. Like this, like this right here, okay? All right, so there's your shank, the shank, Kind of comes all the way up to here. Let's open this up. See what else we got. See that? Just, I'm just continuing to follow, you know, whatever, whatever lines where the muscles connect until I got that whole shank kind of hollowed out there. That's a lot. I have never had braised deer shank okay but i've been told it's really good so if i get this thing out of here without absolutely destroying it that's what we're going to do but the hardest part is coming up and this is the part that i struggle with with hogs it's the part that i struggle with with goats and lamb is anytime i have to disarticulate a knuckle okay uh, a lot of people would just rather get after it with a saw and cut the bone, but I like to try to do it. And mess right. it up every time? So I can tell, I can see a pivot point happening right here. Like I said, I haven't butchered a deer in a long time. I'm not familiar completely with the anatomy. It's very similar to a goat, but I'm guessing by the way this is moving, that this is my joint right here. So let's see, let's see if we can get in there and find it. See if we can successfully, almost like right there. There it is. All right, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for, is that right there. So now that you see that, I'm gonna point it towards myself so that I'm not being dangerous. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this blade in between the knuckle and smaller the blade the better i'm using a boning knife this is my oj grip Some dangerous and just kind of keeping it pointed away from myself i think you know disarticulating a joint like this is probably the most likely time that i'm going to cut myself you know Some because of the amount of pressure that you're putting on the tip of the blade. So basically let you do that. So you can see what's happened here. I've got inside there. You can see, I don't know if you can see this, but there's the round knuckles and then there's the cups that they set into, right? And I'm just working my blade down between these and I'm finding like there's another tendon right there. I'm finding those tendons with that tiny tip of that blade and I'm breaking those tendons and working my way around that knuckle until I get it completely freed. And those tenons are tough. Now what I have to do is this muscle that kind of sticks back here from the shank and kind of connects to the end of the femur, I gotta bone that out, right? I gotta get that off the femur. And I'm gonna do that by essentially boning the way I would bone a femur or, or anything on a, on a ham, right? I'm gonna get in there with the tip of that little boning knife and just work my way up along that bone. Anytime you have to put too much pressure or push too hard, just be sure that thing's pointing away from you. If it's a good boning knife or a good butcher knife, 
uh, it's probably super sharp. And, uh, and if it's dull, that's a Man, course. if it, yeah. If, you know, if you whack yourself with this thing, you're going to the ER. Ooh, did you see that? Yeah. Poked my glove right that. there. Jeez. <laughs> About got that shank out. Look at that. Look at that. All of that. <laughs> Look at that. That better tastes good. Mm hmm We're gonna use Frankie's little uh little shears here out of her mossy oak kit. Uh just to cut that tendon. Okay, and then you know, we want to lose this shank about right there, I think. So let's see how well your knife cuts. What do you think? That's not a knife. Or your your saw. I don't like. No, I don't like. Hold that. <laughs> you did like two things and you were like, no. Nah. Put your, uh, here, let's slide this over the end of the table. Slide it on down. Put your weight on that right there. It's a lot. Okay, so now, can you reach those paper towels? All right, we got a little bone dust on the edge of that shank there. So we're gonna clean that up. So set that off to the side. And let's continue breaking down this back leg. I just really don't want this fat on here. And you know, if I wind up, if I wind up losing just a dab of meat because I'm taking the fat off, Honestly, it's worth it because, you know, when people talk about gaminess in deer, there's two places that that gaminess, well, really, there's there's more than two. Uh, there's some lymph nodes that we're going to talk about in a little while, too. Uh, but there's there's a couple of places the, that are easily overlooked. One of them is the fat. Deer fat is just not yummy like like pork fat is or, or beef fat. It's just not. So when you leave fat in your grind then you're getting this nasty, you know, this nasty flavor mixed in that people call gamey. And then this, uh, another really common place that people wind up with what they refer to as that gamey flavor is blood. You know, when we, when we kill a hog on the farm or, or a, a lamb, uh, or even when they kill a beef cow to process it for you to eat, they bleed it out. You know, we take, we take you know, really good care in making sure that we properly bleed out our hogs. And we also, we also castrate the male hogs when they're young so that we don't get that, what we call boar taint, you know, the hormones of the male uh, mixed in with the meat. So, you know, when you think about a deer, it's about as organic and grass fed as it gets. It's, uh, you know, it, it's natural. It is el natural, right? And this was a buck, this was a young buck, it's a little five pointer that uh, was probably a year and a half old, uh, but he does have a little bit of that buck taint already. So, uh, you know, I've gotta do everything I can do to keep any other bad flavors like fat and blood out of there. We'll talk about blood later, uh, what you can do uh, before you cook this meat to remove that. And then we're gonna get in and we're gonna find a nasty lymph node that if you didn't know it was here, you'd mix it right in with your grind. And if you know what lymph nodes are, I mean, they're designed to get a whole bunch of nasty toxins and just ugliness out of the body. So we don't want that. So anyway, let's move on and let's find the top round on this thing and pull it off. Get rid of that, that's nasty. All right, so kiddo, now what we wanna do, this is the femur. Goes all the way up there, but we don't wanna just Grab our knife and just cut right through the meat, right? We want to follow natural lines. So you see that right there? Put your finger up there and just stick it in there. See if you can peel that apart. Try to slide your finger down. You can almost peel it apart without a knife, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but we're gonna give it a little help, right? 
just to just to open up that natural line okay and we're going to try to get ourselves all the way down to the femur by following that spot right there okay because each of these natural lines is a muscle group or, or a muscle right um and following those muscles as much as we can gives us the ability to have some really good roasts out of this or whatnot. Okay. So if I feel that bone right with the tip of my knife. So now, now I'm deboning, okay? Deboning is when you get the tip of your bone against the, the no, I'm sorry, you get the tip of your knife against the bone, okay? Hear that? And I'm gonna just slide it down a little ways. I'm gonna turn this towards you here in just a second, okay? All right, can you see down inside there? Yeah. Okay, so I got the tip of my blade against the bone and I'm just sliding along the bone, okay? And I'm kind of nervous about doing this towards mama and the camera. Mm. So I'm gonna, I'm fine. now I'm gonna turn it towards me here Cut. and I'm just gonna, I like no, to- it's towards me. Yeah. All right, come on back. Come on back, all the way. Stay on that femur. Okay, see that line right there? Let's open it up right there, okay? Look at that. Look at that, Frankie. See that? Yeah. See how you can just kind of reach in there and just break it apart at that at that natural seam. And I'm gonna get a little help right here, down here at the end with a blade. Always cut it cut away from yourselves when you really got push like that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a beautiful muscle group, right? Just kind of popping right off of there. And then we're gonna figure out which of these muscle groups is what I gotta cut now. I'm gonna cut towards the camera. Give me some room. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that muscle right there. Just wanting to come right off. Let's give it a little help. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna get in here like this. Just give it a little peely peely. Okay. <gasps> <laughs> I just randomly dropped the camera. Just put that anyway. Okay, just following these lines. Around, around here like this. Notice how I haven't really, haven't really cut much meat because I'm trying not to. Wherever it's already naturally wants to come apart. Okay. All right, now I'm up against that hip and that H bone, right? So now we gotta get this off of the bone up here. So I'm just gonna feel, feel where bone is. Be mindful that I got a finger inside there. And look at that. Look at that. Now what would you call that? Uh, I gotta get the rest of these muscles off before I figure it out. Um, I feel like yeah, I'm not 100% sure yet until I see the rest of them. I don't, I don't want to lie to the people. I call it chunk of meat, that's for sure. It's stew meat. Now, do you have to get like every little scrap of fat off because the fat is weird? Or like, it's okay if there's like, like that one has a little bit on it? Um, none of that right there is good fat. Gotcha. Now, you know how I asked you earlier about can you make stock out of the deer bones? Yeah. 
can you do that? Because if the fat is nasty, then is like any, like the fat that's in there, is that going to be gross in the stock? We're not going to put any fat in the stock. But is there anything like on the bone that would be? No. No, okay. no you're going to get the marrow, uh, stuff like that, but. Okay. I'm just chicken. <laughs> See what I did there? This is deer. So that's that, um, I guess it's still called the H bone. That's what I call it when I'm butchering a hog. And I'm just taking that piece of muscle right off of there. Okay. This one right here, I think this is the one that I would call the top round. Okay. Based on this little flat being on top of it, which um, is not part of it. That's what I'm speculating. And if that's the case, this is a really good one to make a roast out of, okay? So we're gonna take this flap off and, uh, and we're gonna make a roast out of this round right here. We're gonna hope that I guessed right, that I'm taking off. Actually, I got, a, I got another, another muscle attached to it there. We're gonna, we're gonna bust that muscle off because I don't believe that's part of the round that I'm talking about. So this all is gonna be grind, all right? Following that muscle group right there. Okay. So that right there, we're gonna tie this up, make a roast out of it. And that's gonna be the only roast out of the entire deer that we're gonna cook as a roast, all right? This is also probably the most ideal piece if you wanted steaks to steak out of, right? You can make steaks out of that right there. All right, so now we got some grind here that we're gonna just clean up a little bit. All right, we'll throw that in the grind. And we haven't started grind yet, so. So we got our shank, we got our round, and then we got some chunks here. I'm gonna put all of this in the grind, but see that artery right there? That's your femoral artery, which tells me that we're pretty close right now to where that lymph node I was telling you about is. We wanna find that, it's nasty. The lymph nodes in their leg? There's lymph nodes all over the body. Well, I know that, but like. But this, this lymph node right here, is like buried in between the muscle. And uh, if you're not looking for it and you don't find it, you will literally mix it in with your grind. And that's probably bad, huh? And that's just nasty, ew. There it is right there. See that? It's a tumor. Yep, you do not, do not, do not want to mix those nodes in with your grind. It's just nasty. Uh, I take them out of the hogs. I take them out of everything I butcher. It's a nice little cutlet right here that uh, kind of looks- Almost looks like a loin. Like a tenderloin, yeah. but it's not. Um, it's definitely not as as tender. I mean, if you wanted, you could- Or loiny. Yeah, you could do something with that, but we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna make that grind. We like grind. We're gonna get as much grind out of this as we can. I can actually come back and trim a lot of this fat after I firm it up, when I'm cutting them up for the grind. So let's get back over to what's left on here. All right, we still got a muscle group on the top of the femur. Maybe you can see the deboning process a little better now. We're just gonna, we're just taking the tip of the knife and just shaving the protein right off of that bone and then just kind of wrapping around to the inside. All the way. Be mindful of where your fingers are at. I like to get my fingers in there and just kind of stretch the meat away from the bone a little bit. Now I, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly where to separate this meat from the hip here. I mean, this is all grind for me. So it's not like you can really get this part wrong, you know? This bone, this femur right here, 
is definitely, uh, I mean, this is gonna make the best stock. There's a little knuckle sticking out there. I just a realized. knuckle? Gotta go around the outside of it. See that knuckle right there? That's what I'm hitting. So I gotta come around the top. I wanna save as much meat as I can. All the sausage, all the hamburger or, or deer burger, whatever. That's all coming from all this stuff right here. Okay, there we go. So again, a uh, bunch of stuff that needs trimmed up here. I'm gonna firm this up and then come back and trim all this fat off of it and break all this up for grind. And we got a little bit more here coming down the that hip bone, cutting towards the camera person. In case y'all are wondering, there is space. Okay, unless I threw the knife. Which you, be... you've been known to do stuff like that. <laughs> so, got all kinds of weird shapes in this hip bone down here. And, and, and you know, I like, to, I like to try to follow them and just get as much of that meat off there as I can. Any of the meat that winds up in the stock pot. Oh, that's a big piece of sinew right there. Yeah. yeah. It's very shiny like that. I, I mean, know. these muscles right in here do a lot of hard work. They do a lot of it hard work. It makes easier jump and run. And, you know, frankly, the muscles oh, that like do the, the hardest work are the toughest muscles, right? The muscles that do the least amount of work are the tenderest muscles. So that's why your, your tender loin, you know, that muscle that runs inside the kidneys on the inside of the belly up along the spine, to a little muscle down each side, that's your best, most tender muscle and the leanest. And then your loins, which run down both sides of the spine, that's pretty tender. Your top round out of the back legs is pretty tender. But you know, a lot of these connective muscles and these muscles that are doing all the work, no, not so bueno. When are deer rowing boats? Rowing boats? That motion you just made. Oh. So, <laughs> just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and try to, to uh, disarticulate this femur. Ooh, it's a big word there uh, for you, Mr. Redneck. Just because otherwise this takes up too much room in the pot. And, you know, it's the thing that I struggle with the most. Uh, you know, these, these knuckles. So I might as well just get practice where I can. And uh, that actually went pretty well. But again, you know, you see those, those big old tendons in there, right? And that's what, I mean, that's what holds them together. That's so, awesome. yeah, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these cold again. We're gonna cut this femur in half so that the marrow can leak out into the, uh, uh, into the stock. Um, this right here actually is the center of the spine. So that is the, that's actually the spinal cord. It's not dangerous on a deer, on a hog. The spinal cord is actually dangerous. They're, it's poison? Their biology is too similar to ours hey, like, people. Is it cannibalism? And you can actually cross the blood, blood brain, brain barrier, barrier from a hog to a human, like meningitis, Disease, stuff like, like that. Like certain diseases that they could potentially pass to you. Yeah, so, so don't ever screw around if you're doing a hog with the spinal cord area. With a deer, it's fine. We're gonna get as much of this fat as we can off of these uh, pieces that are going to the grind. Because again, you know, you want your grind to taste as good as possible. And, uh, you know, the fat's not conducive to that. So, and this, see how thick that silver skin is right there? That's nasty, nasty, nasty. I'm gonna fillet that like a fish. <clears throat> One of those mammal fishies. It's a dolphin. It's not dolphin safe. Now what? You're whack. Crack is whack. Don't you drugs, kids? <clears throat> I mean, that's pretty, pretty good right there. 
And you know, if you if you don't mind the the gamey flavor, then you're then you probably think that I'm wasting uh, some stuff right here. And uh, I get it, I totally get it. But you know, I want I want it to be I'm just fling that anywhere. <laughs> I, I want to be able to serve this to you know to anybody. Maybe not tell them it's deer meat. But we're just going to cut this into some nice sized chunks. Look at that. Look at that meat. Man, that is gorgeous. And this is what we're going to do for everything in this pot right here that's going into the grind. Just go ahead and chunk it up. Is that, that'll fit in your grinder, right? It's a little large, but it, I can make that work. All that grind, beautiful. Got that little top round roast that we are actually going to roast. So I'm just kind of tying it a little bit here. And then we're gonna take a look at, what was our yield here? Come on, slippery. Come on, Mr. Sailor, tie that knot. All right. So there you go. And I've got a beautiful shank that we're gonna braise, a uh, top round roast that we're gonna slow cook as a roast. All of this right here is gonna be grind, okay? And then we've got our bones for stock right here. This is the trash pile. It's not too bad. And that is one back leg from a small Mississippi buck, probably a year and a half old. I'd say he was about 125 pounds, a little five point. That's a decent amount of meat. So we've got his other back leg, uh, two back legs from a bigger eight point uh, that's probably a three and a half year old buck. It's gonna be a little bit, you know, taintier. And then the shoulders and uh, back straps. So we got a lot of work to do here, but uh, that's gonna wrap up this particular video. Frankie, come over here and help me wrap this up, would you? What you got to say? If you like this video, <laughs> make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you know when we post more stuff. We'll see you guys next time. That was a really bad outro, but... Yeah. We'll see it. We'll see you guys on another deer butchery video when will Frankie she? finally kills a deer. Will, will she? We'll see you guys. We'll, will she? We'll see you guys when Frankie finally kills a deer. Australian for beer. Beer. Deer. Beer, deer. See you later. Ooh, deer beer.